Hello and welcome to another episode of The Average EV. Today we're going to be talking about the charging performance of the Chevy Equinox EV after important update GM N24-246898. Let's get into it. <laughs> So some of you right now might be starting to get updates. Some of you might already have the updates, but GM is currently pushing out to the Equinox EVs two updates. The first one is N24-F172AC, and the second is N24-246898. And on the second update, at the end of the refinements is what they call it, it says improves overall battery performance. So after some people started to get that, they were asking me if I would do a test and I said, I will oblige. I will do a test just to see if there's any sort of improvement. And I'm just gonna go ahead and tell you off, you know, at, at the top of the video, not really, but possibly. And I would need to go test more. I'm at a spot right now in my life with my job and stuff. I, I, I just don't have the time to go do a bunch of recordings. So I wanted to get this preliminary video out and then maybe if in uh, like a couple weeks, I can go out and get another uh, recording or two to kind of compare, then I can present that to you all. But I want to at least give you some preliminary findings. So just to set the stage, I've done many, many uh, Equinox charging sessions at this point in time. And I have done a couple on the Tesla supercharger network. I now have a Tesla supercharger, I have access to it. So that's what I use for this charging session. Um, so I'm going to do some comparison between my Tesla supercharging sessions and then I'll show how it compares to everything and then we'll see how it all kind of adds up in the end. So first off, let's go ahead and take a look at um, the first charging session I ever did and the most recent charging session I ever did. So here we are. The red is the most recent and the blue is the first I ever did on a supercharger. They're both on V3 superchargers. The first one was on a magic dock. It was raining. It was about 70 degrees outside. And the most recent one, it was on a regular supercharger with an adapter. But I did use the Tesla adapter because it's pretty much the same as the magic dock. So I could get at least pretty close to the same circumstances. However, worth noting, it was cooler, it was 55 degrees outside. It was in a parking garage as, a com as compared to the first session was out in a uh, just a parking lot, but it was raining that day. So it wasn't like a lot of thermal load on the charger or the car. So as you can see, uh, same dis uh, type of dispenser, same type of charger, the most recent session with the update, I did get a better performance. Now, am I able to say that this update caused a better performance? No, um, but it's worth looking into. So that's why I'm gonna kind of make a call to all of you all. If you all happen to do it 10 to 80%, if you could record it or at least note um, some, some points throughout the charging session, that would be great because that would sa save me a little bit of time. Um, but if you record them and send them to me, I can add them into my data and I'll just keep compiling data and data to see um, if they make improvements over time. But what I thought was really interesting was it held 150 uh, kilowatts for a pretty long time, almost until 30% state of charge. Then it starts to slowly dip down and then it dropped to 123. I do want to note that happened at around the 10 minute mark, which is theoretically when the, uh, the adapter is supposed to derate down to 350 amps. I did the math, it runs up to 370. So that is likely why that drop happens. I don't know if that is why the supercharger sessions tend to do a little bit better because of that um, that kind of force drop. But that's why I also want to go do a, a, a CCS Electrify America session as well. But again, here we are. And then it rides that to almost 50% and then it has the GM dip. So the GM dip is not gone and then it recovers and it kind of catches up, you know, about the same um, power around 75, 76% state of charge as the first session I ever did. So here, a pretty major improvement from the first time I ever charged on a Tesla supercharger. Now going down to do all my supercharger sessions and you can see that this session on the V3 supercharger versus the V3 plus, it actually outperforms a little bit for the most part. And when we look at the, the, the charge speed average, um, I actually have to calculate that really quick. So when we compare 
those sessions, the V3 Plus was a charge speed average of 110 kilowatts, and then the one I just did after the update was 113 kilowatts. So there was a slight bit of improvement, and we can see that with the charge curves there. And then I want to move on to the last thing, and this this I mean this is just a monster of a graph to look at. And I was having some issues with Google uh, uh, Google Sheets getting all the things I like to have, but here it is. You can see all for the most part, most of them have the dips except for the 20 to 80 and 30 to 80. Uh, charge sessions, but here it is, this orangish right here, and it pretty much stays above the majority of the sessions until here, where the one session where I unplugged and replugged in and unplugged and replugged in, that one did a little bit better, but still ended up having the GM dip. So overall, I can't say that anything has directly uh, changed because of this update, but it is possible and it is. Um, it, it is, it is possible. It's, I don't want to say it's likely, but it is possible. So that's all I have for today. I just wanted to share that. Like I said, I'll do a follow up video in maybe a month or so when I have time to go do some more charging sessions. However, if you all want to do a charging session, you can record a video and you can email it to me. Uh, you might have to put it in like a Google drive and share it with me. Or if you want to just like record it and then put it into a spreadsheet and send it to me, that'd be cool too. Just so I can catalog uh, things like that. I know this is really nerdy. A lot of people don't care about it, but uh, the reason why I want to do this is I want to track over time the improvement of the charging for the Equinox EV. And additionally, I want to see if they have a consistent uh, charge um, charge experience. If they could at least make it consistent, that'd be great. So this charge session uh, was about 38 minutes and 40 seconds, which is still long. But honestly, if I always knew it's 38 minutes, I feel a little bit better. Uh, probably not likely to be consistent because we still have the GM dip, which is some sort of thermal issue, um, but it's at worth at least tracking over time. So I hope you all found this video helpful. Uh, I am going to cut in the footage of the charge session if, if you want to watch it. If not, you can just skip over it. But anyways, I hope you all found this video helpful. Uh, if you could please give a like, a subscribe, hit the notification bell, follow me on X, follow my sister channel, EV Charging Site Reviews, and I will catch you all next time. Thank <laughs> you.